Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel, it's Josh and today we are taking a first look at the beautiful Seiko Cocktail Time Mockingbird uh, and the Mockingbird is the one with the beautiful green face on it um, I think that this is actually relatively new to the Seiko line um, and it's funny because I don't really keep up with what Seiko is releasing or anything like that but by the time I find out about things they've usually been out for a couple years or so um, so anyway I just happened to be browsing and I found this guy online um, and I just thought that the green face was so beautiful. And then upon doing more research, it seems like this is either the 2019 color or one of the 2019 colors. Um, every year, Seiko will do kind of like new uh, colorways for the cocktail time. Now, before we even get started talking about this watch, I want to show you the box that it came in. Um, and it's funny, when I got this, so I got, you know, the shipping box in the mail, and when I opened that up and I got this box, I almost thought that they sent me the wrong thing, so until I looked at, like, the label, and, you know, this is the SRPD37, so this is, in fact, the, that watch. Um, now, I don't know if this is something new for Seiko, and Seiko people school me down in the comments if I'm wrong, but I've never seen this box before. Typically what I've gotten, again, even when things are shipped directly from Seiko, I've gotten this. And this is, uh, you know, just kind of like the older Seiko-style box. Um, you know, it's nice, it's fine, it's, it's totally acceptable for like a $300 watch. But, you know, you've got just like a basic pillow and you've got, you know, the kind of stuff down at the bottom. Um, so anyway, this is what I've, I've been used to getting from Seiko. So that's kind of why I'm thinking that this might be new, but let me just show you this really quickly. And I'm not trying to drag this out or anything, but look at this kind of whole setup here. Um, we've got a really nice kind of outer hard box, and then we've got, you know, the manuals and warranty card and everything in the bottom there. And then inside that, we have this beautiful, very un like kind of watch box. Um, we've got a really nice kind of blue ribbon here with a contrast texture. We've got a fully lined kind of like velvet lined inside with a really nice Seiko printed here in silver. Uh, really nice pillow there. Um, and then inside of this was my new cocktail time. Um, we have the original product tag here, and you can see that's SRPD37. Um, and you can see here we've got the label. It just says SRPD37 J1. Um, J1, for those of you who don't know, is a kind of designation that this watch, anything with J1 on the end of it, was in fact made in Japan. Anyway, I don't know if this is a new box or anything, but I was really, I'm really, really impressed by this. Um, especially again because retail this watch is 425 and I only paid 255 for it. We'll get into that later. Really, really, this is actually nicer than the JDM boxes that you will get if you buy a JDM watch. I would assume, you know, since mine came directly from Seiko, that this is how you will get one if you order this watch as well. Uh, some of you on my channel will know that I, that this is actually not my first cocktail time watch. Um, I purchased about a year ago or so, um, I purchased the cocktail time with the silver face and the silver hands. Um, and that one has a little bit of a blue tinge over top. And it's funny, I filmed a whole video on it and ended up returning it because I, as I was filming that video, and I'll put a clip of that in here, as I was filming that video, I kind of started to fall out of love with it. Um, I realized that kind of the only way it looked good was on its stock strap. I don't think it looks good with anything except a navy strap. So here's sort of a light, almost a cognac brown. So now that we have a brown, you know, a warm strap on the face, you can kind of, you can really see what I meant about that blue tinge earlier. I just don't think that this watch looks as good. Same thing, this is maybe a little bit better, but darker brown straps, generally speaking, will have kind of a reddish tone to them. Contrasts quite poorly with the blue tinge on this dial. Okay, so how about a basic black strap? Well, the black doesn't have any saturation because it's black, so it doesn't look bright. Do you know what I mean? Like, everything is just wrong in the world when you put it up against a black, brown, or whatever strap here. So anyway, after returning that watch, I kind of thought about getting the, um, the kind of brown face. I thought about the blue face. But both of those are a little bit gaudy to me. I just, they were a little bit much for my personal taste. So anyway, I kind of, that kind of cooled off the whole me wanting a cocktail time. But I've always wanted one in my collection. Um, and I figured, you know, if one comes down the line that I see that I think it's a really nice color, then I will absolutely pick it up. And that 
brings me to this guy. When I saw a picture of this watch, I was like completely sold. I didn't even need to look at it. I was just like, I, give me, sh like, shut up and take my money. I needed to have it in my collection. The face is this beautiful green. It really, really changes depending on what light you're looking at. It can be the most subdued watch and it can be the most like exuberant watch, I think, depending on how you you know, really look at the color of it, depending on what light you're looking at it in. So um, here we are, we're looking at it under the lights I usually use for filming. They're quite bright, um, so we're getting a lot of that green highlight here in the video. But let me turn off my light for just a second here. And you can see now we're looking at it under like no lights. It's basically like I've got sunlight coming in through a window, um, but no other lights in here besides that. And you can see it's a really, really subdued color. So, you know, if you want something that is, you know, it shines in the light, but is still kind of timeless and classic and subdued enough to wear on a daily basis, um, this guy is absolutely going to be a good choice because, again, like this dial almost looks black, doesn't it? This is my SARX 055. This does have a straight black lacquered face. Um, and you can see here, like the green really, really is not obnoxious if you're not looking at it under really bright light. So let me turn my light back on here. Um, so that we can look at and get the detail out of here. Now what's really interesting to me about this watch is that the green of this face is almost exactly British racing green. So if any of you guys out there are petrol heads and you know it is the color that, you know, the classic Land Rover Defenders were painted in and, you know, the British manufacturers like uh, Jaguar Land Rover have continued to, you know, produce British racing green cars. Now British racing green is beautiful. It is absolutely one of my favorite colors, hands down, regardless if we're talking watches, cars, whatever, because British racing green is a very cool cold green and yet it still has some of that kind of emerald warmth to it that I think really makes green pop. You can see here that we do have silver applied indices. Everything about this watch is typical cocktail, you know, aside from the color. But one thing that I think is really cool about this is that they decided to do the silver hands but a gold second hand. So can you see that there? I don't know if the color is coming across here but the second hand is noticeably warmer than all of the other indices on the dial. And to me, that's a really nice way to do it because, you know, that way you still have the silver tone hands, indices, and case, and the one pop of, you know, kind of contrast color to the green is that gold seconds hand. Um, now, if you guys watched my Seiko Recraft video, and this is the Seiko Recraft with the green face and kind of gold indices, um, you know that I said in this video that um, gold really, really brings out the warmth in green. And that is absolutely what this second hand does. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I have mine on a different strap. This is a Shinola strap. If you guys have watched any of my videos, you know that I'm a huge, huge fan of Shinola leather. Um, I think that they do like just the best leather watch straps out there. They are a bit pricey at about $100 a piece, but this strap will wear in and patina and darken over time just absolutely so beautifully. Now let me show you really quickly. This is the strap that actually comes with the watch. And you know, it's fine. It's it's your typical kind of Seiko leather strap. Um, but all of the cocktail times that come on leather strap come on kind of like this really shiny kind of patent e leather strap. And I really don't like these at all. I, I never ever use these. Um, the thing with patent leather, I think I mentioned this earlier too, is that patent leather does not stand up to any kind of, you know, wear that your watch will take. Patent leather looks really, really beautiful on something like a shoe or a wallet or anything, but like as you actually start to wear it in, like you can see here, I'm just bending this guy, um, but patent has a tendency to wrinkle, it has a tendency to crease, um, because patent always has kind of like a PVC or plastic coating over top we actually will start to get kind of like cracking and dulling and, you know, just kind of weird artifacting on the leather itself. And so, you know, like even just, again, that was like, what, two minutes of me kind of bending this thing. And you can already see it starting to look kind of like not aged, but kind of beat up. <laughs> now, knowing that I wanted to take this guy off of its strap, um, the minute I bought it, I started Photoshopping what it would look like on kind of different color leather straps. Um... And I'll put kind of like the pictures of that in the video here. But it's really interesting how, again, this green face really complements a bunch of different colors. Um, I think it looks great on gray. I think it looks great on tan. I think it looks great on all kinds of browns. And I, <laughs> I even think if you're one of those people who maybe love Christmas, love doing like kind of like 
over-the-top kind of watch combinations. I even think that for holiday, this would look really, really, like, um, great, like, really great, but really cheesy on a red leather strap. Um, so if you wanted to, you know, go and get, like, a cheap red leather strap just to do kind of, like, a one-off watch combo for holiday or something like that, um, I really do think that this would look really great, really fun, maybe, on a red leather strap. So, again, if you're one of those people, try it, because I, I don't hate it. <laughs> I actually think it's really, really fun. Now, I think that this is going to be just a standout watch for fall. Um, it's definitely one of those watches, though, that where I'm not going to wear it in the spring and summer. Um, I tend to change my style up pretty dramatically between, you know, spring, summer, and fall, winter, or autumn, winter. Uh, one of the key pieces in my wardrobe that I wear very, very frequently during the fall is something like a Burberry scarf. Um, and so you can see here we've got really, really natural kind of earthy tones. And I think, again, that this pairs really, really beautifully, even, a, a, you know, with the red. Um, when I got this guy, I was thinking about, you know, kind of like what I tend to wear, what my wardrobe looks like for fall and winter. So I put together a little bit of a collage, um, you know, kind of with all the different pieces that I tend to wear during, you know, autumn and winter. I wear a lot of really muted colors, really natural colors. So... Uh, everything between beige and brown, tans, khakis, you know, if I'm going to do color, it's usually either green or red. And so putting the watch up against what I, what my wardrobe personally looks like, really, really is, it's amazing. It, it shocked me, honestly, how well this watch will pair with almost my entire fall wardrobe. Now, I have um, quite a bit that I want to talk about on price and how to buy this guy. Um, but first, let me cover the movement so we can get that out of the way. Um, you guys know I don't really get into movements here on my channel because I think that there is so much great content out there already um, in terms of all of Seiko's different movements. Here we have the 4R35. It's a great movement. You know, it's a really serviceable movement. It's a really reliable movement. It is definitely a workhorse caliber. Um, the 4R is just a really great movement. You know, it's a really solid workhorse caliber movement. You can have it repaired anywhere. You can have this thing serviced anywhere. Um, it's not some, you know, million dollar movement. Um, and I think that that is actually perfect for uh, what somebody who is buying this watch at this price point is looking for. Now, I want to bring back my recraft for a minute. And one thing that I did say in this video was I kind of wish that this guy had the forearm movement, um, which this guy does have. So if you're kind of looking maybe between these two, um, again, I paid about 113 for this guy and this one I paid 255 for. So it is a sizable price increase between the recraft and the cocktail time. But again, you're getting a made in Japan piece versus a made in what Malaysia, I think, something like that piece. Um, and you are getting the forearm movement, you're getting the hand winding, hacking seconds and everything like that. So I know a lot of you out there were looking for a green Seiko piece, um, but really wanted the forearm movement for all of you guys who were looking for that, I think that the cocktail time, the Mockingbird, is definitely worth your time. Uh, at least, you know, take a look at it and see what you think of it. Um, which brings me to how this guy is priced. Retail on here is $425. Now, because this is an international model, you can actually get the JDM version of it, which is exactly the same watch. That one is the SARY133 for $364 on Seiya's website. Um, and whilst I love Seiya and I love JDM Seikos, I think that I would go US on this one only because you can typically find it for cheaper. Um, I tend to buy all of my kind of like lower end Seikos from Macy's um, because they often offer the best price. So again, I paid $255 for this. It was on sale for something silly like I think $320 and then there was another like 20% off on top of that. So all in, this guy was uh, $255. Now, that sale and that promotion has ended, but if you're watching this anytime around Labor Day weekend 2019, uh, Macy's has it for $272. So you can still get a killer deal, I think, on this guy. Um, and really quickly, you guys, I want to address buying a watch from Macy's. Um, you guys know that I love to buy watches from Macy's. One, because they are an authorized retailer for both Seiko and the Swatch Group, but they also offer like the best price, hands down, anywhere that you'll find. But I've gotten a lot of junky comments, you know, from people saying, well, you're just getting, you know, whatever's like left at the department store. It's been picked over by anybody who can just walk in off the street and blah, 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 blah. 
And I'm sure that that is the case for some things. You know, if they have to ship it from a store, then yes, you are getting something out of a display case that, you know, X hundred people have touched. But if you are a smart shopper and you know what to look for when you're shopping on Macy's.com or Bloomingdale's.com too, um, if you scroll down the listing on the page, you'll see this. And it says, like, on Bloomingdale's, it says, like, direct from vendor. On Macy's, it says something like ships from vendor. Um, and what that means, you guys, is that these watches will ship directly from, you know, Seiko or Tissot or whoever the manufacturer is. That's what they mean by vendor. Um, so like I mentioned, I bought this guy at Macy's for $2.55 and my watch shipped directly from Seiko. And again, like I got the brand new box, everything was in its plastic, it had never been touched, it had never even gone to Macy's. Um, so when you're shopping on those sites, look for that like direct from vendor thing because if that if it's coming directly from the vendor you are getting it directly from Seiko so for anyone who wanted to make a junky comment about well I'm buying from Macy's I'm buying from like you know the lowest common denominator or whatever um, and so yeah I am kind of buying it from you know a, a department store at the mall or whatever but my watch is coming from exactly the same place that yours would come from if you and I if you bought yours from Seiko and I bought mine from Macy's um, and you would pay the 425 and I paid 255 so I don't know you know it's <laughs> I don't want to sound like an asshole here but if I paid 255 and you paid 425 which one of us is the smarter shopper you, you know what I mean so I don't know the more you know the smarter shopper you'll be and uh, yeah I, <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about that I guess all of that is to say don't write off Macy's and or Bloomingdale's as a crappy place to buy a watch because they're just, you know, the department stores at the mall. So again, guys, thanks so much for watching another video. I'm going to leave it there because I'm rambling. Um, this again has been the Seiko Presage Cocktail Time Mockingbird with the beautiful green face. I am just, I love this guy so much. I'm so excited to wear it for fall. I will definitely do a follow-up video on how this has been working for me, probably after the holiday season. Um, I hope that you are having a great long weekend if you're watching this right after I upload it on Labor Day weekend. And I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.